I did my bachelor's in aerospace engineering. The fact that I had a good GRE score along with my recommendation letters, tried to get started as early as possible and first got a reject from Georgia Tech. The fees in Georgia Tech was a little bit lesser than I was not totally prepared for like two full years of uh, paying the tuition fees. The classrooms were pretty much the same. A lot more funding over here. So you'd be able to see like 3D printing machines on every other lab where, whereas in IIT Kanpur, you'd have, you'd be having like one machine for the entire department. The applications that are way more competitive apply directly through professors. Almost as the same level of difficulty as the coursework which I had at IIT. Uh, there are, there'll be some faculty who are like really good at teaching, but not so good at research. More focuses on like undergraduates rather than postgraduates. In US, there is no like hiring portal. Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today we have Bala, who is studying MS in Robotics from Georgia Tech. So, hi Bala, uh, welcome to College on your study abroad channel. Just give us a brief intro. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Bala. I am a second year master's in robotics student at Georgia Tech. I did my bachelor's in aerospace engineering at IIT Kanpur. Uh, my work is in my work in robotics is right now on underwater robotics. So uh, earlier I used to do some work with respect to like hybrid quadcopters. All right. So uh, Bala, uh, my first question is why Georgia Tech? So, uh, so when I applied for colleges, the top four colleges which I applied for were uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia Tech, and Maryland. Uh, I had gotten into Georgia Tech and Maryland, but I didn't get into Michigan and uh, UPenn. So, of these two, I preferred Georgia Tech compared to Maryland because of the fee structure and the course in general, courses in general. All right. So, tell me something about your background. Uh, what all you have done in your academic and uh, how was like your scores in GRE and everything? How did you prepare for that? Uh, sure. So I did my bachelor's in aerospace engineering, uh, where my GPA was like uh, six point eight. Uh, but I ha uh, had also a dual degree GPA of like three point six, and then my GRE score was three twenty eight, and I had a TOEFL score of one zero six. So currently, I have a GPA of around three point seven in my uh, masters, and uh, where, when I applied, I think uh, the fact that I was from an IIT and the fact that I had a good GRE score along with my recommendation letters were uh, were good. So those helped me in getting into a uh, good admitted Georgia Tech. I also had like good projects while I was doing it. Under, yes, under yes. That. So uh, I will be talking about your projects also, Bala. Um, so what was the GRE score exactly? 328. 328. So uh, Bala, uh, what all LOR you got and, and the SOP you got, any tips you want to give around, around making the best SOP for, for Georgia Tech? So in general, I would say uh, try to get started as early as possible and maybe um, get it reviewed by the seniors and uh, maybe even your professors as well. So that the SOP matches the like whatever projects are being written in the SOP matches the same projects which are being talked about in the LORs by your professor as well. So that way it will act as a confirmation for your SOP. Uh, other than that, uh, pretty much a standard format which you could probably get from an internet would probably work, I guess. I, I didn't do anything specifically so that I uh, okay. like specifically for this SOP thing. All right. So what all other colleges you considered along with Georgia Tech? Yeah, so I already told that um, I had applied for Michigan, UPenn, Maryland, Georgia Tech. I had also applied for Oregon State University, Worcester Polytechnic, University of Delaware, University of Minnesota, and Colorado Boulder, University of Colorado Boulder. Of these colleges, I did not get into Michigan, UPenn, and Oregon State University. Other colleges are all. Uh, I've gotten admits. Cool. So if you can be specific about the admits uh, you got and the rejects you got. So yeah, so I, I, didn't, get, I didn't get into uh, University of Michigan, UPenn, and Oregon State University. Other than that, I got into Georgia Tech, University of Maryland, Worcester Polytechnic, uh, University of Minnesota, University of Delaware, and University of Colorado Boulder. So I got six admits and three visits out of nine. All right. So you got around uh, like uh, after you got the Georgia Tech admit. What was the next process? Uh, how did like when did you got the final confirmation after applying? What was the time difference between that? 
yeah so i applied at the end of february and i applied at the end of january around like beginning february i got my admits st- started i uh, getting my admits like uh, around like beginning of march and by the end of march i had gotten all of my admits and rejects uh, actually i had first gotten a reject from georgia tech and then after a week later only i had gotten an admit so i had to confirm with them and then after around like 2 3 weeks only they gave, gave back confirmation saying that yes the admit was clear so and then after that uh, a month later i got my i20 and then after that you could use your i20 to apply for a visa and then it goes on from there all right so uh, coming back uh, to the application process how do you manage the funding have you got so, yeah, uh, yeah yeah so uh, i knew that uh, the fees in georgia tech was a little bit uh, lesser than compared to maryland so that was also one of the reasons why i chose georgia tech over maryland uh mm-hmm. so i knew that i would be getting like at least one or two semesters of uh, like funding like one or two semesters uh, tuition waiver so i was not like totally prepared for like two full years of uh, like uh, paying the tuition fees so for the time which i had to pay the tuition fees i had to take a loan of about 25 lakhs all right okay so uh, can you just specify the bank uh, i got it from canara bank canara bank all right so once you uh, got the admit and you paid the tuition fees uh, how was the experience once you landed at the campus your first impression about the campus uh it's like very like i i mean it's it's smaller than iit kanpur actually and uh, there was like lot uh, okay. like the roads were all very like hilly like it was all up and down so you can say that was the first experience other than that the classrooms were they're pretty much the same like you still had older buildings there and like newer buildings were pretty good uh yeah other than that there wasn't like any sort of like new feeling per se so i would say uh, iit kanpur has very good cycling uh, uh, yeah yeah so yeah so, i would uh, say it has about, better cycling uh, yeah tech. yeah better cycling environment than georgia tech georgia tech it seems like it's built like you can say us itself is built for cars so okay yeah so lots of automobiles on the roads Yeah, lots of automobiles on the road. I mean, uh, the cars do go slow in like the college areas, but still, it's still I would say riskier to ra- ride a cycle here rather than say in IIT Kanpur. There, yes, that yes. many cars are not there. IIT Kanpur is an amazing campus. Lots of green and everything. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so you said uh, you were not prepared for two years of uh, tuition fees and everything, right? So, and you got yeah. some high lakh loan. So, yeah. Uh, uh, since when you started looking out for internships and the on campus stuff i started looking like immediately after i came in so uh, because of that i was able to get a teaching assistantship in my second semester and then i got a part time internship now so i'm doing a part time internship in a drone startup okay so yeah so it wasn't like like i know f- for a fact that i was going to pay this much money it was basically like okay this is probably what i was going to have to pay Yeah. it which actually probably went up because of the fact that uh the rupee went up from 75 to about like 82 so mm-hmm. i probably ended up paying like 2 3 lakhs more mm-hmm. okay okay so uh how to find a job at georgia tech so yeah i, I would say like go to career fairs and like go to like try to uh, message as many people as possible on linkedin try to improve your connections uh and then try to build your professional networks there like if you go to career fair and try to meet people eventually you will get through at some point of time you'll try you'll uh, find an opportunity and you'll be able to make use of it so uh, how to find the on campus job like like to the internship thing similar to that only you'd have to okay. build a network and like talk to professors mail professors keep on mailing so that uh, eventually again you eventually be able to there's no guarantee for it but okay. yeah of course i couldn't get it in my third semester but yeah okay so do you have any central job uh, openings uh, at or general or central job board in your campus where you can look for all the job openings yeah there is but uh, like in general the applications that are way more competitive so my advice would be to apply directly through professors like mail them uh, okay. try asking for teaching assistantship or research assistantship rather than applying through the central job board what job you got so i got a teaching assistantship in my second semester for a mm-hmm. course called aerospace systems engineering and what was your what was your your stipend for that 
I got a stipend of two thousand dollars, uh, and I got my tuition fee waived as well. So two thousand dollars and tuition fee waived off. Yeah. Uh, okay, two thousand dollars in in a month. Yeah, two thousand dollars in a month. So I would be saving up around thousand dollars because my rent is around seven hundred dollars, and I my other expenses cost around like three hundred dollars. And how many of your batchmates got such jobs in your in your class? So. Uh, I would say like around 60 to 70 percent would easily get like 20, 30 percent uh, probably don't get, but yeah, around like two thirds of the people would probably get it. Okay, all right. So next thing is is social life. Where do you guys party? The campus. <laughs> There. Uh, I mean, if you want to party, you can party, but I usually didn't. Uh, there are like lot of lots of places. There are like. People who party in like other people's houses and like clubs to go and party, but yeah, I I I didn't usually party. If if at all I had time in the weekends, I usually went out like to gym or like jogging or like if at all even if I had even more time, I probably like went out to like nearby cities or something like that, seven hour like somewhere else. Okay, so you are staying off campus, right? Yeah, I'm staying off campus. So do you have any roommate? Yeah, I do have uh, three roommates right now. So okay. one in one North Indian, uh, one Thai, and one American roommate. Great. And how much you're spending uh, on your stay? Yeah, I said right, seven hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, can you just give the breakup of the your monthly expense if you can? Yeah, sure. Six hundred dollars is my rent. I pay around like hundred dollars for my utilities, so that comes out to seven hundred dollars. And most of the other expenses come out to like three hundred dollars. All right. All right. So, how tough is the coursework uh, in your in your class? Uh, it's uh, it's it was al- almost as the same level of difficulty as the coursework which I had at IIT. But right. the thing, the caveat here is that I did not. I'm not doing the same course which I'm doing. So, I'm like basically changing my major from aerospace to robotics. I'm taking a lot of computer science and electrical classes. So, it right. could have been due to that factor. Uh, when in reality, it could have been much easier. I think. If I had taken the same aerospace courses. All right. So coming back to your research uh, section, you said uh, you were also researching in IIT Kanpur. Now you are doing yeah. research at uh, Georgia Tech. So yeah. can you just uh, talk something about your research area? Then how the difference uh, between research at IIT Kanpur and research at Georgia Tech? Yeah, sure. So uh, at IIT Kanpur, my work was on uh, flight dynamics and controls for. Uh, hybrid retro vehicles, basically like hybrid quadcopters, which has both rotary and uh, wing components. Uh, so then we had to do like a lot of internal testing and like uh, flight simulations and so on. And then uh, here my work is on uh, acoustic localization for underwater robots. All right. Uh, basically speaking, if I had to just like say um, the work is very similar, but but then. Uh, There's a like a lot more funding over here, so you'd be able to see like 3D printing machines on every other lab. Where whereas in IIT Kanpur, you'd have you'd be having like one one machine for the entire department. So you still had the same facilities, but still it's way more like say widespread in Georgia Tech compared to nice. IIT Kanpur. Yeah. So more funding is very much visible over there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not like. Like so much of a gap that you can't cover it. Like you could still right. be able to do the same work which you did back there, but still, okay. yeah. And so, how are the faculties? Like uh, you are teaching. Yeah, it's yeah. You can also name pretty, anyone. Yeah, it's pretty much the same actually. Uh, like in general, uh, there are there'll be some faculty who like who are like really good at teaching, but not so good at research, and some are like really good at research and like that. So there isn't like I couldn't find any sort of qualitative difference between the faculty as such. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, other than that, the main issue is the funding issue and the fact that um, a lot more emphasis is given on research over here compared to say teaching over here. Right. Whereas in IIT, is the the more focus is on like undergraduates rather than postgraduates. All right. Which are the companies hiring your uh, hiring the student from your course? So in general, in US, there is no like hiring portal or like any sort of like. Say campus placements, so it's That's similar right. to how we do apply for our uh, jobs on campus jobs. We need right. to get through our LinkedIn contacts and like try applying through different job portals and try getting right. a job. In general, uh, any sort of robotics software jobs would, or robotics mechanical jobs you could go for. Like, but right, right. now I think uh, the tech jobs are li- like in a sort of um, mm. resistant phase, so it's yes, a little right. difficult right now. So, which are the com- 
companies were actually hiding the graduates from Georgia Tech from your fourth. Yeah, so like I said, this is the first year, so I I don't really know for sure. But if I had to guess, the companies which came for our career fair would probably be there. So Amazon, ABB, uh, like maybe uh, you could say like the labs, Oak Ridge okay, National Labs, right, the right. labs which are there in US, like right. those kinds of companies. Basically, any sort of warehouse robotics companies, drone robotics, healthcare robotics companies right. you have got. So there is a very good uh, robotics company, Boston Dynamics. Yeah, so Boston Dynamics did come to our uh, career fair. All right. So yeah, I think they must have hired like one or two at least because they did come to our career fair. So, yeah. so what is the average or median pay uh, for your for your class? Again, I don't know because this is the first time. So I presume okay. that it will be somewhere like around one twenty thousand dollars. Okay. So about seniors and all. So what about the seniors and all? No, no, this is the first batch. Okay, this okay, is okay, our okay, first okay, batch. Okay. Like there, this, are, this, this, there are no other master's batch. batch before us. So this was the first batch. So okay, okay, all right, all right, get it. So you are saying one twenty k dollar is an uh, I would yeah say it's average. like yeah hundred to one twenty like, would probably so, uh, be the what about the other batches like uh, non robotics I would say com com science and all yeah something what, like that so that's why I said that based on that it's like hundred and twenty thousand dollars all right all right so uh, Bala uh, I'm almost done uh, so I would be asking a uh, like one closing remark from you uh, for all the upcoming uh, students who are actually looking to study at Georgia Tech. Why someone should uh, come at Georgia Tech and why someone should not come at Georgia Tech? <laughs> so uh, I would say why someone should come or not come. Like it's very difficult because f- a lot of people might not get admitted to Georgia Tech. So a lot of people might get admitted like better colleges than Georgia Tech. So I really can't say for that. I mean, in general, if you want to work in like let's say, technology field, like robotics or like any sort of like say the cutting edge fields like nanotechnology, biotechnology, those fields, mm-hmm. I think it would be better. to at least get some get a higher degree and then get some ex- work experience in US or uh, other western countries okay. that way yeah you could move much faster in your career compared to say uh, just moving on in your job in India because i don't think these fields are at least moving as fast as right. the growth is there that much in india there are like other fields which are going very fast like um, like it sector like or say something like say It's just the software engineering in general, but if it's like something like say robotics or nanotechnology, I would say better to get a degree in US or something like that. All right, uh, thanks for comments, Bala. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. And thanks for uh, joining us uh, over this call. Um, thank you.